Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm back again today for more of our Gen Con Bonanza Explosion blog coverage. Brought to you by uh, a bunch of amazing companies that donated games to help send us to Gen Con and our sponsors, Tasty Mineral, Min, Tasty Minion Games, and oh, wow, Tasty, Tasty Minion? Minstrel Games and Minion <laughs> Games. It has been an incredibly long but fantastic weekend. This is the video in which me and my lovely wife Melina, who puts up Hello. with a Bonanza on a daily basis somehow. Uh, are going to do a live stream of all the different games that I got at Gen Con, all the cool stuff, go over some stories, go over the games. And also, if you have any questions about Gen Con or just in general, be sure to post them and we will answer them as well. So she's going to be manning the computer and we are up and running. Fantastic. So she's going to be on that. And without further ado, let's talk a little about Gen Con. It was spectacular. Uh, in case you didn't notice, we got 111 videos up over the course of the weekend. I'm uploading the last 24 right now as we speak and we're also doing this but let's get to the games and we'll talk about more as we go so first one is actually uh, my buddy eric's on his top 10 it's team up it's like a tetris -y style game with these really nice wooden components i honestly kind of zoned out about the uh, the uh, instruction in it but eric was super stoked about it so uh super excited to check this one out looks like a really fun dexterity game so in fact i was i was not the most uh, interested when I did the interview, which is bad, but hey, yeah, that is Helvetic, and I'm actually going to just put the games behind me because we don't have room on this massive table. There's just an insane amount over here. Uh, continuing on, we have Street Masters, and uh, so I, I interviewed them, this company, which is a newer company, I think, Blacklist, about their upcoming game, uh, Brook Brookside, which is like this, this 80s slash 90s cop miniatures game. I was like, oh, that looks really cool. And they're like, we just released this one. It's called Street Masters. And I was like, what? Well, you guys doing any review copies of it? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. And so I was like, cool. And then they're like, well, do you, do you want all the stuff? And I was like, yeah, sure. What does that entail? And they're like, oh, here's the stretch goals. And here's Street Masters, Masters Legend of the, the, the Legend of Oni. And I was like, oh, but cool. And I was like, all right, hey, Flanny, come pick up games and bring them to the car. Uh, because it's me, my buddy Eric, who, uh, by the way, I want to give them a big shout out. Eric, we've been doing it for the last five years. We are a well-oiled machine, as you can probably tell by putting up 111 videos. Uh, he does the camera crew, and he's just good at everything. I actually kind of hate him for it, just how good he's amazing at everything, isn't he? he? Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And I'm good at stuff. I'm good at a lot of stuff. But man, he just <laughs> he puts me to shame. Uh, and then my buddy Nick, who uh, was really he was really clutch delivering games to the car and doing all sorts of stuff oh. like that. Uh, but yeah, excited to check I that stuff out. Call, hear him call Nick. Oh, yeah, Flanny. Uh, next one is from Simon, and that is kick ass. And this game looks really stinking cool. Uh, this is a game based on the comics. It has gorgeous miniatures. It's a cooperative board game, one to four players, in which you have to balance your daily life while at the same time, you know, kicking ass as a superhero. Super excited for this one. Uh, oh, getting this one to the table. Yeah, there you go. Kick ass. Simon. <laughs> Because we're going to do pretty short descriptions because there's there's a insane amount of here. Next one, Rescue Polar Bears, Mayday Games. This is what I want to play with you. It is, he pitched it to me as a pandemic -y game where you were trying to rescue polar bears before the polar ice caps melt. And it has absolutely gorgeous polar bear resins. This one, I'm expected to be a really big hit for them, especially if it's a good game. But, you know, I should say, I should wait and say if it's a good to great game, I expect it to be a big hit from because it looks just, look how cute that is. Aww. I know, ridiculous. Rescue Polar Bears, mini games. Super excited to check that one out. Refresh that to, to check real quick something. Uh, next one is from what do, 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 Heidelbar Games, which if you don't know them, they're under the Asmodee flagship. I did an interview, uh, got a whole bunch of the scoops on a bunch of Asmodee games. And at the end of it, she was like, what would you like to review? And I was like, oh, uh, I don't know, because there's a whole bunch that I wanted, but it's all upcoming stuff. Uh, but this one piqued my interest. This is a party game. with It's a party trivia game, but there's like marbles and stuff. I watched a couple people play it, and I was like, is this good? And they're like, yeah, this is really good. But very interesting game. I'm excited to check this one out. Let's see, age is 10 plus, so I might be able to play it in my classroom. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but yeah, that's tags. I don't know anything about it, but I heard it was good. Next one is Welcome to the Jungle, which is a double-edged sword. I'm gonna, I'm, I, you know, if you watch my channel, you know I like to give you a little peek behind the camera. I'm very brutally honest. This one I thought was actually going to be released at Gen Con. It was on Eric's top ten most anticipated games of Gen Con. Turns out this is actually just a really pretty pre-production copy, and I, uh, Eric, kind of agreed to do a Kickstarter video. Uh, Eric kind of agreed me to do a Kickstarter video for someone, and I was slightly annoyed with Eric. I think later on I'm going to tell you that Flanny also did the same thing. Because 
I have a lot of games to review right now, and this is now a game that I have to get out in a specific length of time. That being said, looks pretty cool. Uh, welcome to the jungle. You take control of a crew leader. Use the cash. Uh, it actually doesn't tell me anything about the mechanisms or whatnot in the back, but yeah, it's gorgeous artwork, which is what Eric wanted, so yeah, we got it. Coffee Cake Gaming. Welcome to the jungle. Continuing onward, Maze Racers. This one I am hyped about. This is actually an older title, so I'm not going to have too much on it. Uh, JC at Foxmine, I was like, hey, I know this is an older title, but is there any chance I could review it? And he's like, absolutely. Fresh eyes on it. This is a game where you're going to be creating a magnetic maze. It looks super stinking cool. Uh, this is going in my classroom tomorrow, well, so actually, a lot of fun. yeah, can you put it in the chair over there? Because that is going into the classroom tomorrow. Super excited about that. Next, got a shirt from Fallen Dominion Studios. Huge thanks to John. Uh, Fallen Dominion Studios, uh, the creator of the amazingly fantastic Fallen Lands post-apocalyptic board game. He hooked me up with a shirt and actually hooked me and Eric up with the shirt. Um, if you're not checked it out and you like like epic scale games similar to like Twilight Imperium or something like that, this is definitely one that I would recommend checking out. And they're also super nice dudes as well. Uh, yeah. Next we have Honey Honeybee. This is not a new one. This was one I... Hannah Honeybee. Hannah Honeybee. Whatevs. This is not a new one, but this is one I picked up from Hobba Games. Uh, and yeah, I probably, you guys are probably interested. This is one of the, the games that I actually bought, because uh, everything I've showed you so far are review copies, but this is one I bought. It's for my two-year-old son, Luke, because I told him I'd surprise him with the game, so yeah. It's older, though, so hey, what is Woo, keep that one to the side so we can play it. Next. For the record, you actually told him he could pick it out. I know, but I didn't have time. Next, we have Newspeak. This one is an actually really interesting game. It kind of reminded me of uh, Spyfall. This one's actually a Kickstarter prototype. It's going to be coming to Kickstarter, I believe, later this year. But this is a game uh, in which one person is going to be kind of like the... Uh, uh, the government, and they're trying to figure out the codes that other people are saying at the same time. Check out the... What? Sign into chat. Oh. Well, let's sign into chat real quick. Let's do that. Yeah, can you do that for me, dear? Uh, yeah, this one looks really stinking interesting, so I'm excited to check this one out. And actually, I should set that one aside, because that's a Kickstarter, and I don't want it to get lost in a huge pile of stuff. Uh, but do, 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 do. Hey, how about you show everybody these cool shirts, dear, while I sign in? Oh my gosh, no, the laptop died! Ah! No, it was uploading videos! It was too young! Well, we will get this fixed, but we'll keep on keeping on. Next one, I got a sweet shirt from Colossal Games. Uh, Travis, the creator of Colossal Games, super nice dude. I've known him for a couple years now, and he hooked me and Eric both up with the shirts. And Tom Vassell said, this is the second most comfortable shirt in all the board games. So I'm excited to get this one wrapped all around me. Uh, another shirt, and this was definitely the biggest shirt for shirts for us. Bad Doctor, the big new release from Mayday Games. They had these shirts for five bucks. And since they gave me a review copy, they're like, hey, you want a shirt? And I was like, yes. So super cool looking shirt. And then this one I'm super excited about. This is for the weekly Alaboom, the podcast I do with Lance Meister and Scott Oldham, a bunch of other people. Uh, but yeah, super awesome custom uh, custom jerseys they had made for the podcast. Google, I probably shouldn't say my password online. <laughs> Uh, Don't do that. And actually, I just want to give you a cool story about Scott Alden. He is the owner of Board Game Geek. He is one of the nicest people in all board games. Super nice dude. Uh, and he was like, yeah, these will be 60 bucks." And when we got there, he was like, hey, don't worry about it. They're free for everybody in Alboom. So super awesome. And I love the black and pink. It reminds me of Brett the Hitman Heart. Yeah, restore. Oh, I screwed up. No. Not your fault. I unplugged it. So be careful not to unplug it. Uh, another shirt from Fall of Dominion. That one's actually Eric's. I stole it. Uh, next one, Fork Olympics from Brain Games. We had four new releases uh, that they were showing off. Very cool stuff. This one is a... Oh, I'm trying to remember. I actually played it at Origins. I believe this was a drafting game in which you're trying to... Uh, you draft the cards, and then you play the cards as part of the Orc Olympics. It's, it reminds me a little bit of No Thanks in that aspect, but I really, uh, I really enjoyed this one for what it was. There you go. Bam. Oh, yeah. Click on it. So... Next one we have is Super Party Battle. This one is from... Who is this from? This is from Kess. Uh, yeah, this one actually just caught my interest because it had shot glasses on it. It's not a new game. Why? Can you turn it off? I can't. Volume? I don't know where. It is down there. Uh, yeah, so this one's just a party game with shot glasses and apparently you have to make silly voices, which, you know, if you watch my channel, you know it's right up my alley. <laughs> but it's not a new game, but I was interested in it, and so he sent it to me. Uh, next, I have two games from Japan Anime Games. Actually, we had three. This is Kemomimi Panic, uh, which I believe is like a werewolf <laughs> spinoff. Actually, they gave this away at the Japan Anime Games party. Uh, I tried to tell Nick and Eric not to take a copy, but then we got three copies because she was like, just take them! And I was like, okay. So, yeah. 
There you go. I don't really think about it. Continuing onward, we have this game. Big money from Wonderforge. Uh, we did an interview with them. I was not expecting much. I actually thought this looked like a really cool, simple-looking dice rolling game in which you uh, purchase different cards, and then you roll this dice, and if the, your, the symbol comes up, then you're going to get uh, money off of it. It actually looked like a really cool game. I believe this is a Walmart exclusive. Yeah, Walmart exclusive, so that one's cool. Ooh, is there a weird. comment down there as well? Yeah. Uh, how did the missus party while you were gone? I don't know. That's a question for you. And the I'm UPS alive. Guy. I'm alive. She uh, that's, was... That's where we're at. My, my wife is incredible. She actually babysitted two other kids on Saturday along with our kids, and apparently... The other kids were great. And our kids. Two girls. I didn't really know what to do with them. Yeah. We have two boys. Next one, Dinosaur Tea Party, which I'm excited to play with my classroom, but I will say I played it with adults, and I was a little bit disappointed. You know, you come here for honesty. I was disappointed in this with adults, but it's ages 7+. plus. Uh, definitely, though, of the five restoration games I've played, including Fireball Island, which, by the way, oh, man, I'm super excited about that one. This is probably the most disappointing one, but yeah, I'll bring it to my classroom and see if it goes over way better with the target audience instead of a couple, you know, 40 or 50 year old guys, which is what I was playing with. Uh, but yeah, that one goes into the classroom pile for tomorrow. Next game we have is the Brady Bunch party game. Yeah, I had to go there. I had to interview them. I had to see what was up with it. Uh, very interesting social deduction looking game. They compared it to Secret Hitler which I was immediately intrigued because Secret Hitler and Brady Bunch are just... You don't put the two together, right? But they did. Uh, I'm excited. They also had, uh, what's his name? Cousin Cousin Oliver at the booth. And uh, I have a new Three Truths and a Lie thing. Three Truths and a Lie, uh, I'm a family member of the Brady Bunch has photobombed me before while I was trying to do work. Yes, Cousin Oliver got into the back of my video. Not this one, but a different video. I think for like Home Alone or something. And was just like dancing around. And I'm like, what the hell is Cousin Oliver doing back there? I love our hobby so much. That's amazing. Yes. So, okay. oh, and by the way, if you haven't watched that video, watch the last question. Cause it, cousin, you need to show me that video. That's cousin amazing. Oliver was in the video. The, the, and I was like, how many of the Brady Bunch do you think you could beat in a fight? Back when they were kids. And the first thing I said was, I'm, I know I could take Cousin Oliver. And he's standing right there next to me. He was a good sport, though. Very, very nice guy. Uh, next. Uh, thanks for all your Gen Con coverage, Bauer. It was greatly appreciated. Awesome. Thanks for once again uh, being a supporter of the channel and subscribing. And I want to I clear something up right now because... There was some stuff going down at Gen Con, and I want to make it abundantly clear right now that I don't care who you are, I don't care what's in your pants, I don't care who you love, I don't care what you do with your free time, I want you in the hobby. And I want that to be evidently clear, that I support everybody in the hobby because I love this hobby, and the more popular a hobby gets, the better for the hobby it is. So I don't care, you're far left, you're far right, you're right in the center, gender fluid, transgender gay, straight, whatever, I want you in the hobby, and I want that to be abundantly known that I support everybody getting in this hobby, because apparently I need to go out of my way to say that, but hey, I will. So next. Something S happened. Okay, uh, I have no idea what's going on, guys. Did they ever catch the guy who attacked the other guy at the bar on the first night? Are we opening that? Matt, are we going there? All right, let me talk about Super Mario Brothers Power Up Card Game, and then we'll talk about the alleged assault at Gen Con because, you know, Super Mario Brothers Power Up Card Game and Alleged Assault go together. Uh, Super Mario Brothers Power Up Card Game, this is a um, an expansion to the Super Mario Brothers uh, card game, which I actually enjoyed from last year, but it's a new, entirely new game. Uh, I don't know what's different, aside from maybe it's underwater levels, and I'll bring it to my classroom tomorrow and talk about it. So, here it is, and I want to start off by saying allegedly, 100% this is all allegedly, even though it looks really, really, really bad. Um, so there's this guy, uh, he runs this uh, Magic the Gathering YouTube called The Quartering, and I'll be really honest with you, that he seems like a giant D-bag. Uh, but if you agree with his opinions, that's fine. I, I don't care. I just wanted to let it be known that he does. We actually watched some of his videos and like, like, that's kind of a cringy guy. But he got punched in the back of the head repeatedly. Uh, he said five to ten times in the videos, and there were witnesses who saw it, and he, then the, the assailant punched a window on the way out um which i want to i want to make this clear and i put it in my thursday recap i don't care who you are and that's why i said this guy's kind of seemed like a d-bag that's not cool like period if that guy he is a d-bag <laughs> he he may be i've never met the man personally 
it doesn't matter. You can't do that. If he falls the wrong way, he's in a coma. He could die. I mean, that's, I mean, it, it get, like, it's giving me goosebumps right now to yeah. think, it, I don't care. You just can't do that. I don't care if it's a, if he's a Nazi or a neo-Nazi or, or what. You know, unless this person did something, you know, absolutely terrible to your family. I mean, you can't. And especially if it's over political beliefs or Anita Sarkeesian, which is what it, apparently it was over. You just can't do that. And the alleged assaulter is a guy named Matt Fantastic, uh, who is a very, very far left person who I interviewed. Uh, and um, yeah, but that's alleged. That's all alleged. But it looks really bad. I don't know what the fallout with from that was. Apparently there was like a huge controversy with Gen Con keeping it quiet and banning people from posting on their social medias and their Twitch and just Twitch? it blew up into something huge. Twitch is a, it's, it's a gaming stream thing. It's, it's like Mixer. Okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, so I was not there. I do not know the, know the details. I only know secondhand stuff, a lot of secondhand stuff, but it was definitely the buzz of the con. I did actually see uh, Matt Fantastic Saturday Night. I didn't really speak to him because we actually had... A little bit of an online type of thing, which not a huge deal or anything. Uh, but I saw him Saturday night, and I was I, he would he wasn't in jail, so he didn't look like he was hiding. So I, I guess maybe they they resolved it or something. Not sure. I'm sure there will be more from the fallout. But there you go. There's your Gen Con, uh, Gen Con stuff. Awesome statement, by the way. Oh yeah. Uh, and best entertainment on a Sunday night. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, next, Unlocked the Mansion of Mana. I know absolutely nothing about this game. Somebody was like, hey, I like your channel. Would you mind going and picking this up? It's from Goodnight Games and What's Games. Uh, how to play five-minute video. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I don't know anything about the game, though. So there you go. This one was not actually on sale at Gen Con, so I don't know if it's new. Uh, one to five players. Ooh, 60 minutes. That's me. Uh, next, Tiny Epic Zombies, which I'm excited. This is actually the first Tiny Epic game that I have ever got, and I've interviewed them a couple times. So moving on up, they were like, hey, you want a copy? I was like, oh, sweet. I also interviewed them about Tiny Epic Mechs, which looks really stinking cool, by the way. Uh, but this is a, a zombie survival game in the Tiny Epic series, which is coming out later this year. So excited to check this one out from Gameland Games. Next, we have Sports Dice Football. I really love Sports Dice Baseball, and I'm excited for Sports Dice Football. I got a chance to demo it slash do the interview, and it is a super simple version of football where you just roll dice and see what happens but it's actually really fun uh the guy that designed this uh he, andy he is he's good at what he does so i'm hoping that there's sports dice basketball and that actually is going to class tomorrow next we have another game for luke my two-year-old little bird big hunger no idea ages three plus so i grabbed it older game though so we won't talk too much about it. okay uh matt fantastic wouldn't mess with bauer like jackie chan he is a drunken master in kung fu <laughs> Matt Fantastic is jacked. Uh, so I would not personally want to get into a confrontation with him. But real talk, because you get real talk about his game corner, somebody's going to punch me in the back of the head. As long as I'm not going to die or go into a coma or be terminally mangled, I'm actually not against it that much because, you know, if somebody punches you back in the head, you can sue the living hell out of them. And, yeah, I mean, she'll tell you I'm terrible. Like, when we go to Walmart, I secretly hope that something falls on me all the time. He does. It's ridiculous. I just say it. Oh, follow me. Never mind. Uh, okay. I got an awesome potato from Big Potato Games, which, by the way, Massimo from Big Potato Games. He's such a super nice dude. Uh, Big Potato Games, they do party I games. I love those things. Yes, and he gave us an extra one. So, yeah, thank you, Massimo. You rock. Yes? Okay. Uh, I just watched your video on Key Forge. I loved it. I'm excited to play it when it does come out. Key Forge! Yes, I am excited to explore that game more. And that was actually the most popular video that I posted. And you'll notice, I give you honest opinions, because uh, I actually the first video up on Keyforge, and I thought it, was, it wasn't it was not exactly glowing. I mean, I didn't say it was terrible, but I thought it said it was good and not great, but hey, what else? Continuing on, Stellar Leap, Weird Giraffe Games. Uh, I don't know anything about this game. Oh, Carla Cop, yeah, we did an interview with her. Not about this game, this game came out at Origin. Origins. Origins. Uh, she was super nice. She was telling us about Library in the Fire. And uh, another game, but I'm very excited to check this one out. She was a super nice lady, and this game looks pretty stinking cool, even though I did an interview about it, so uh, I don't know that much. Okay, so get tiny. Bleh. Apparently, he's rubbing off on me. I can't talk either. Get tiny epic galaxies, it's the best of them all, and there's a plus one on that. Yeah, I, I actually really like that. That one I have played, my buddy Brandon is a huge fan, and I, I really like that one as well. Also, any regrets from Gen Con, meaning something you wanted to do, slash play, slash interview, and quit? 
that's that's good. And I want to say this. Uh, I love Gen Con. I've always loved Gen Con. She'll tell you. I'm, I'm going to be beaming about Gen Con for the next few weeks. And then before, this was, and me and Eric agreed, this was our best Gen Con that we've ever gone to. And this is my oh, sixth cool. or seventh. It's just everything. Everything. And uh, what we always like to do is we like to do a top five, bottom five video. And we, we were talking about our bottom five on the car ride home. It's like an hour and a half, two hour car ride. And we were really stretching our, stretching for like what was disappointing. And man, I feel like the board game hobby is in such a good position. There's such a diverse palette of games out there to try out and to experience. Now, this is just from a consumer perspective. Now, that being a reviewer perspective. So I guess I do have a different kind of perspective. But there's so much stuff out there, which... I guess it's a double-edged sword, but no, there's no huge ones. But yes, there was tons of people that I wanted to talk to and that I wanted to interview. There was uh, there was the five-minute Marvel game and the Hail Hydra, which was from like Ultimate Spin Masters. And like Wednesday, I was like, all right, I'm interviewing them. That looks awesome. That looks awesome. That looks awesome. That looks awesome. It was like Thursday, I want to go there. Friday, I want to go there. Saturday, I was looking at the Sunday. I was like, bro, I didn't get to go there. I didn't even get to talk to him or find out what it was about. And I talked to three separate people who were like, Hail Hydra's fantastic. And I was like, Grr! But yes, just not having enough time, I guess, would be one of my big ones. Uh, but no, I, I didn't. Oh, there was a hot wing eating contest, and that kind of ruined my Saturday morning a little bit, but I powered through it, and we still shot a boatload of videos. <laughs> yeah, my... Ooh, yeah. Well, I want to get into too much detail, but let me tell you, it was rough. The bomb hot sauce is not, not something you want to mess around with. <laughs> Uh, Fleecing Olympics, the, Olympus, this is a new one from Passport Game Studio. It looks like a really interesting negotiation and outwit type of games. Plus, it plays up to six players. This one will probably hit the game table this week. Uh, it looks really cool. Uh, yes, Bauer has the best Gen Con coverage. Thanks so much. Did you have internet problems like everyone else said they did? No. <laughs> no. I mean, we got up 111 videos. You got a lot up this year. Since this morning, and uh, I'm hopefully going to post the rest of them tonight, which actually I should be doing right now. Uh, so, yeah. No, we didn't have any. Luckily, our hotel didn't have any issues. Um, so, no. I mean, you don't post 111 videos when you got bad internet. Uh, yeah, so I guess, knock on wood, we got, we got lucky on that. Next one is Dyson Dragon from Golden Eggs Games, who actually has a kind of a bad reputation for, for kickstarting and stuff, but gameplay game-wise, I've liked all their games. This is a really interesting 20-minute, uh, like, role-playing type game where you're going to start with a character, and then you're going to level up your character as you face dragons. We got a chance to play a whole demo game of it. Excuse me. Really like this one. Also, got a really cool dice tower with it as well. So this one, uh, 8 plus. Yeah, this one's going to the classroom as well. I really enjoyed that one. Excited to play that one a little bit more. Boop, 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 boop. What would you say is the most innovative game you came across? Innovative. That's that's a really tough one. Um, Keyforge is... I don't know if it's innovative, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of Keyforge here. Uh, Claustrophobia from B -B 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 Pandasaurus is a really innovative... I didn't get to talk to them either. That's another regret. I really want to talk to them about getting a copy of that. Uh, claustrophobia is one where you you have blacked out glasses like you literally cannot see and there's one person who plays as a killer or a vampire and they're trying to find you and you have to feel your way through the forest and you kind of make this mental picture of a forest that's pretty neat is that uh, the one we saw Oregon? yes Keyforge. this is a really unique sounding game which if you didn't hear about the Keyforge announcement um this is from richard garfield aka king of tokyo aka magic the gathering Ooh. and each one of these decks is its own distinctive deck and no one else in the world will have my deck and this is a one versus one card battle game which i thought was good uh and the more i thought about it the more my, my original criticism with this was i'm not sure how it's going to work out because i feel like the people that like to play this kind of game are the people that love to deck build and deck construct but then i had a lot of people post in the comments and on the videos and in person they were like I kind of like that because I can just buy a pack, it'll be my pack, I don't have to worry about, you know, counting up to 30 or doing this or doing that, and so maybe it's just going to attract a whole other subsection of the market. Either way, I'm excited to play this one more. Uh, we went to the Fantasy Flight in-flight report, which by the way, uh, if you haven't watched my video on that, that is an event that I had never been to before, and as a fan, I, I would recommend going to it at least once if you're going to Gen Con, just because it's a completely different experience. It felt much more like an E3 type of thing than a Gen Con type of thing. It was really cool, plus they were giving away two packs a piece, and luckily we had extra people, so we got a whole bunch of packs. So excited to get a review up on this one. Did you get your games correct? Get my games correct. Claustrophobia is a... Nyctophobia. Yes, Claustrophobia 1643 coming out from Monolith. 
by the way, huge shout out to Barry Dublet. He does some videos for the Dice Towers uh, and board games, dot, dot, dot. He is an absolutely fantastically nice guy. I, I loved hanging out with Barry. Me and Barry got a chance to play three or four games over the con. He taught me this game called Badass Force, and he's a super nice guy. He was uh, doing demos for Monolith, and he actually got me in touch with the guy from Monolith, and I might be doing a, the Kickstarter video for the upcoming Claustrophobia, which, you know, for me, that's a lot of exposure because the, their Kickstarter was raised millions of dollars each and every time. So, huge shout out to Barry. Super nice guy, but then again, it, just, just the whole industry for the most part is super nice. How are the crowds? How are the crowds? I was really kind of shocked. Saturday, I thought it was going to be like the biggest day of Gen Con ever, and it didn't seem that terrible. Uh, I don't know what they were doing, but it it didn't seem any worse than normal, which was really surprising. Um, it actually seemed slightly less crowded, but I mean that's still insanely crowded. Uh, but no, we didn't we didn't have as many issues as I think before. So I'll be very interested be very interested to see the attendance numbers. We've got a couple of comments about uh, Key Forge. What's the deck size? Deck size. I can look that up for you right now. The deck size is uh, 37 cards, and this contains one unique 37 card deck, and I think it was something crazy. Like, everyone on the planet could have 32 million of their own decks and be completely different. Wow. They, they throw out insane numbers, which, you know, cool concept. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm excited to hear after you play Keyforge. My body is ready. Uh, I played it. I, I ran a whole game of it, and I thought it was good, and I want to experience it more. And I think it would be a really fun tournament-style game where everybody gets a new pack, and it's like a round-robin tournament where maybe if you lose three times, you're out. But as you play through it, you get more and more accustomed to your deck. It also had, like, super powerful cards that, that you could get to, and I liked it. I'm excited to experience it more. Ticket to Ride New York. Played this in Origins. Son loved it. Super excited. Yes, she loved it as well. 15-minute ticket to ride, and it really does feel like it's a 15-minute so ticket to ride. That does. one goes in the pile going to class, and that, that pile going to class is going to be ridiculous. It is. You should be proud of your channel and those who help with it. Yes. And I, 37 in a row? 37 in a row. I don't know. 37 Wait, cards. No, Keyforge. Keyforge. Uh, 37 cards. It uh, chopped up when you were talking about Keyforge. I don't know what NRL is. Uh, push a little bit more. Uh, 37 cards, but everybody's 37 card deck is going to be different. I guess there's like seven houses, so think like Star Realms, where each one's going to be kind of different. Uh, but yeah, po post some more, and I'll see if I can figure it out, the answer. Awakening Lair, this one looked really sick and cool from Rather Dashing Games. The, and I, ta I interviewed them about it, and I was like, yes. So, Dungeon Crawls. Typically, these are huge, super expensive miniatures games. He's like, I wanted to make it a cheap but fun card game. And I was like... Yeah, that's a great idea. So he, he showed me Weakening Lair, and I'm very excited to play this one as well. Very cool looking game. Oh, apparently it's a Clerks reference. Oh, love me some Clerks. There you go. And what's your best dance move, and did you bust it out after getting this hole? Uh, my best dance move? Uh, no, I'm not a very good dancer, am I? No, no but I was... Kind of a thing. It actually kind of snuck up on me because we had we had my buddy Nick, who was the third member of the crew, and it was just like, hey, Nick, can you come pick up these games and bring them back to the car? Hey, Nick, can you come get these games? And it was just like, we get two or three games here and one game here and two or three games here, and it's just like he kept picking them up and they kept going away, and then I get out the minivan, I'm like, oh, my God, the minivan is completely full of games. Like, three dudes, a uh, whole bunch of minivans, couldn't even see out the back window. Uh, there's a huge, there's a picture of it on post on Twitter. It's ridiculous. Uh, but yes, I'm needless, uh, needless to say, I'm super excited because it's the kind of stuff that, that keeps the channel growing and making these relationships with these publishers. And that's something, man, I really love doing that. Just continuing to see the publishers grow and the people in the industry grow. I got a perfect example. Uh, Walter was this guy who I talked to, I think, five years ago. He's a creator of Champions of Horror, and they had a booth. And, I, I'm, and I'm going to put it like this. I don't think Walter disagreed. I interviewed him, and it was like, man, these guys really don't seem like they know what they're doing at this time. And now he's like one of the big dudes at Greenbrier Games. And he's got a game that actually I think is going to crack my top 10 most anticipated, uh, the ones that the, the top five games, that, the top 10 games that I saw at Gen Con. And it's just cool to see that progression. And it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, still, so my games, same way. Like now they're, you know, he's, he's like a made man at Gen Con. Uh, Poetry Slam, Mayday Games. This is a really unique game in which you have to make poetry and make people laugh it's a very cool game if you have the right group for it very excited to get this one to the table again i gotta try it at origins 
uh, I'm going to take a slight computer break while my wife unboxes a game that we got in oh. the mail. Because I need to make sure that those videos are up. So, because oh. we're also going to talk about the games that I got while I was away, because a lot of them are Gen Con releases. And I'm going to sneak right back here to make sure all the rest of the videos are up. Wait, all it says is Fulfillment Center. Ooh, Fulfillment Center. That's my favorite. No Whoops. company name. Files. Ooh, paper, what's it be? Crackles. Crackles. Wait, what? Crackles. Uh, that must be a screw-up. I've actually already reviewed that game. So, cool. You got it twice? I will see if Eric wants it or I someone. You know what? Actually, I think I know who, I, who might want it. Uh, yeah, it's an abstract strategy game from uh, the Fireside Games, which, by the way, was one of the companies that donated games to help us come to Gen Con. So, super awesome. Oh. And, yeah, I liked it. I'm not a big abstract strategy fan, but, uh, yeah. It wasn't expecting that one. All right, continuing onward. War Chess from AEG. This is a really interesting game. Uh, it's got, like, these poker chips on a map. I'll take care of that in a second. Uh, poker chips on a map. This is one of the big AEG releases. And I'm excited to play it, but that being said, and you know, I like to break the fourth wall. I like to give you the lowdown. Yeah, go to the other window. Yeah. Uh, I actually heard a little bit from one or two people. They were in the same group, so it might have been. And they said that there was something that could really break the game in there. with If you get everybody on the map or something like that. Uh, so hopefully that's not true. Hopefully they was just like, man, this game is broken. Like that sort of thing. But needless to say, I'm going to be looking for it when I review it. Because now I can't get it out of my head. Either way, it looks like a really cool game, and it's heavy, really. Oh, my God. Yeah, very cool game. Well, uh, very, very cool sounding game, I should say. Did you find the lack of mature games this year, sadly? Uh, mature as in adult games? Um, no, I mean, I, th I think there's... That, I saw quite a few of them, honestly. Uh, but, yeah, I don't think I took many of them home. But that being said, I also have reviewed a lot of them. I know there's a new game company called Games Adults Play, who released, like, eight of them... Big Potato Games kind of focuses on a lot of uh, games, which I talked a little bit about them earlier. Uh, but yeah, the more adult party games, the, the, the better. I mean, she knows I love them. Istanbul, the dice game. I have never played the original Istanbul, which is what I've always wanted to play. But I don't know. I actually didn't even interview Todd about this from AG, but he, uh, my buddy Nick came over and was he was like picking up games, and he gave us this one. So I know nothing about it, but I love dice games, and I've heard nothing but good things about Istanbul. Let's see. 30-minute playing time. Nice. Okay. Uh, next one is Bad Doctor from Mayday Games. Which, by the way, I love the artwork on this. The theme is, sounds really interesting to me. You're playing as bad doctors, and your whole job is to make sure that people don't die on your shift. Like, you get points if other people die on other shifts, so you're just trying... It's a tile lane game. You can also try and cure people, uh, and you get points for it. Most of the time, I like Mayday Games, so I'm excited to try this one out. Kind of comic book. Yeah, I, I really like the artwork. Next Did week. Did you try any Gen Con special brews? <sighs> we, I did try the one at Rock Bottom, which was was good. I don't remember what it's called. Don't worry. And this was the first year that we did not post our Gen Con beer review. We bought the beers, and then Flanny accidentally took them to the car, and then he brought them back. But by the time Saturday night that we were gonna drink them, we were all too drunk, and I was posting videos, and I was super tired. So we're going to do the beer tasting video later this week. Me and Eric, we're going to do a top five, bottom five in the beer tasting video. But this is the first time we haven't done it at Gen Con. Because last year we did it in a bathtub. The time for that was like four dudes in a bed. So we always try to find an interesting place to do it. But next year, we're going to double it up so we can find another interesting place. Uh, Home Alone. This one really intrigued me. I believe this was actually on Eric's top ten. But it was one that I was really interested in. This is an asymmetrical game. As you're playing as either Kevin to try and outwit the crooks. Or the bandits who are trying to, you know, I don't know, break into Kevin's house. Uh, very excited. This one's going to be, I believe, a Target exclusive. This is from Big G Creative. This is the same company that did the Brady Bunch game and the Monster Crunch game. Woo! Oh, he did get an Alaboom jersey. Who? You. Yes, yes, you said, absolutely. That's a question. Did oh, you yeah. Did get an Alaboom jersey? I did, I did. I was very excited to get an Alaboom jersey. Uh, so, yeah. Bright pink and black. Reminds me of Brett the Hitman Hart. Not my favorite wrestler, but I still love the color scheme. 42, and Tommy on the back. Uh, most fun interview you've had. Oh, man. 
I love doing the interviews, and I love, and this is something that really struck out to me, is that most of the people who I review on a repeat basis, they actually really look forward to the question at the end, the oddball question at the end. And I actually had somebody say they thought I wasn't going to ask the question, they were like, if you don't ask the question, I'm going to stop it. Uh, the, the most fun interviews that I had, I mean, I don't know. Honestly, we shot like 130 or 140 of them. I like the people who really get into specifics. Like, you know me, I, I, like, I will tell you just about everything. When I ask those questions, I, I tell you everything. Uh, Travis from Colossal Games, I've known him for quite a while, so he's very open and honest about his answers too. So, um, But off the top of my head, I cannot answer that. I'm sorry. But uh, I, remember, I know there's some really good ones. There were some times where I wasn't really expecting people to go in as in-depth as they did, because some people are like, their shows are like, well, well, I would bring good critters if I could only take one thing to Hawaii or something. It's like, come on, bro, really? Or the worst is when we're, like, doing a movie game and I ask a movie question, and they're like, oh, this game, this movie that I'm showing you the game for, it's like, really? So now what I've done is I'll, I'll like, I'll mix that. So, like, I interviewed them about the Battlestar Galactica uh, miniatures game or the, 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 the war fighting game, and I was like, Sci-fi movie, aside from Battlestar Galactica. So I'm going to nip that stuff in the bud. It really annoys me. Give me an honest answer. Uh, next one, Good Critters from Arcane Wonders. Uh, yeah, Tom Vassell, Dice Tower, Seal of Approval. That's all you need to tell me. I have yet to not like a game from Arcane Wonders, and I've yet to like any, not any, like it something. Whew, lots of talking this weekend in the Dice Tower Essentials line, so I'm excited to get this one to the table, so it's probably going to hit game night. Oh. Whew. Oh, my well, goodness. It. So many games. So it. many games. And I will keep talking. Patchwork Express. This is a two-player version of Patchwork Express. Uh, this is one of, uh, from Lookout Games. Like I said, I interviewed uh, Megan from Asmodee. Super nice lady. Uh, and she took me all around the huge Asmodee thing. And I did a whole bunch of interviews about upcoming stuff from Days of Wonder and Z-Man Games and Fantasy Flight and all those companies. And then she was like, what games would you be interested in reviewing? And I was like, oh, this one or this one or this one or this one. And she was like, uh, those actually aren't out yet. So she just kind of grabbed some stuff from me. This one, Patchwork Express, two players. 10 minutes? Wow, less than 10 minutes. Age is 6 plus. What? That's going into the classroom pile. Oh, I'm cool. Costume I, I gotta part... Play, I gotta play catch up. Hold on. Okay. Uh, the question about the mature games. My question referenced the relationship games and some of the more adult card games. Seemed a theme from last year, couples therapy. Oh, like uh, Fog of fog of Love? Maybe? Uh, more adult card games. Yeah, I didn't really see any. Oh, you know what? That was actually, let's do a throwback to Matt Fantastic, who I referred to a little bit uh, a little bit earlier. Yeah, he had his company, which had the the, the one game. Uh, you remember the, the counseling game where you talked about your what you liked to do in the bedroom? Yeah. Yeah, which we really enjoyed that game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, uh, b -b 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 Kama Sutra, which I still have. Uh, but yes, there was not, he was not, I don't know if his booth was there. I did not see his booth. But yeah, there wasn't there wasn't as much as stuff like that. And I do like stuff like that. But I also don't know if there's too many games that are actually like that. I, I feel like that's an incredibly niche audience. Next one is Costume Party Assassins from Ultra Pro. This game looks super cool, and it doesn't really show it on the back of the box, but it has absolutely fantastic miniatures. And it's this really simple game where you're going from room to room, and you have to kill people, and you're trying to not get caught. And it looks really cool. I think this is going to be ones that I really really like from Gen Con. Uh, just from the demo, and Flanny played it, and he really liked it as well. So excited to get this one to the table. Costume Party Assassins. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Uh, Good Critters is an American version of the German... I'm going to butcher that name. Something. Uh, great game already, now in a prettier package. Sorry guys, I took Spanish in high school. And that's why it pays to go to Essen, because I'm sure Tom probably saw that at some one time at Essen, was like, that needs to be brought over, and sure enough... I'm probably going to tell you it's fantastic. Or I might tell you it sucks. Who knows? But if it does suck, I'm going to tell you. By the way, I don't nice think it jersey. will. Thank you. I like it a lot. Next one is Coin and Crown from Escape Velocity Games. I know absolutely nothing about this game. Uh, Flanny picked it up. Uh, I've reviewed both the games from Escape Velocity Games. One was a really cool trick-taking game, which I still have up there, and the name of it is eluding me. And the other is Holmes and Moriarty, which I actually just posted a review of on last Tuesday, which is a really cool two-player game. I want to stress that. Holmes and Moriarty is a really neat two-player game where you have to do, like, tic-tac-toe. Uh, definitely check that one out. So needless to say, excited to check this one out. Coins and Crown, but I don't know anything about it. Looks cool, though. So, hey, that's something. Board game announcement you were most excited to hear. 
board game announcement I was most excited to hear. That, that, uh, that's kind of a double-edged question there. Uh, so, first one from a strictly media viewpoint. I have relationships with a lot of companies. I really do. He does. And, and I've been building those over the course of six years now. Uh, one of those companies that I've never had a relationship with in any way, shape, or form is Stephen Bonacore. Stephen Bonacore. Oh my gosh, how am I drawing a blank right now? Ah, Stephen Bonacore's company. Uh, boo, 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 who has Terraforming Mars and a bunch of other great games that I can't think of right now. But yes, his company and Indie Board and Cards merged together, and I have a strong relationship with Indie Board and Cards, which means that now... Stronghold? Stronghold Games. Thank you very much, whoever posted that. Uh, yeah, so now I, in theory, have a relationship with Stronghold Games, which means maybe I can get some terraforming, mar terraforming Marms goodness, and Marms. they're a huge company, so, you know, just having a relationship with that company now will that's hopefully so translate into being, uh, having a relationship with that company. Uh, so that's from a strictly media personality perspective thing. Uh, and then from an actual gaming perspective thing, um... <laughs> This is going to sound stupid, but I really thought Munchkin Crazy Cooks looked really neat. But the, the answer that I think most people are going to say, and that I will also agree with, is Return of the Dark Tower. My buddy Brandon actually has a co working copy of the Dark Tower, and it was super cool. I played it with him last year, and I talked to them about it. And it's being designed by uh, Isaac Childress of Gloomhaven and Rob Dabio. And needless to say, you put those two names on a box, you're going to make a million dollars. You put Dark Tower on the name of the box, you're going to make another million dollars. You put Restoration Games in the name of the box, you know it's probably not going to suck. So, super excited about that one. That being said, I, I actually did predict that that was going to happen. Oh, disappointment of the con. Yes, Blizzard. <clears throat> Blizzard didn't have enough Overwatch stuff. Uh, next, we have Pyramid of Penguin from Brain Games. This is a really cool game. Uh, it's a one versus all game, but all, the all are actually working against each other. It's got this... Oh, that's a magnet, right? Yeah, there's this magnet, and you're playing as either the Pink Queen, and you're trying to catch these kids, these penguin kids, as they're trying to get different pieces. It's a really cool-looking game. It was a redoing of another game, which I don't remember what it's called. Uh, but yeah, I got a chance to play this at Origins. I'm really excited. Yes, he will. I got a chance to play this at Origins, and I really liked it a lot. Surprise of the con. Surprise of the con. I've got another question after that because I think it's funny. Surprise of the con, and this is a spoiler because it's probably going to be... Oh, you know what? Oh, man, there's a lot. I saw so much. Um, Sit Down Games has two Essen releases. So Sit Down Games uh, is working hand-in-hand -hand with Dude Games. The Dude Games is in America. Sit Down Games made Magic Maze, and the Dude Games brought it to America. Love Magic Maze. You remember Magic Maze, right? Tap the thing. Go left, go right, go up, go down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah love yeah. that game. Uh, they announced that they're going to have expansions to both Magic Maze, that one where it's like a hidden trader game where one person is actually going to be working against the team, which sounds fantastic. But the two S releases I'm super stoked about. Uh, one is called Gravity Superstar, which looks like this really simple, fun game. Uh, it kind of looks like a mobile app. That one looks cool. But the one that really, really looks neat to me is called Bad Bones. It is a tower defense game that I guess I've been working on for four or five years. And it looked, it floored me. Like, it was early in the morning, and it was just one of those interviews where I was like, whoa, this looks awesome. So, Bad Bones from uh, Sit Down Games, and it will be coming to Dude Games, I would imagine, uh, probably, hopefully next year. That one is one to keep on your radar. Really, really like that one. I didn't get a chance to play it, but it looks super cool. Monster Crush, the breakfast battle game from Big G Creative, which, <sighs> yes, it's the same company that did Brady Bunch and everything. I actually heard from a couple other viewers that it's actually really fun. So I'm excited to check this one out. And what's uh, I was super jealous was the first day of the show when you sold this or you got a review copy of this, as some of the viewers got it, uh, you got a box of cereal, too. And I totally missed out on getting, like, blueberry or something or hot chocolate. But still, very excited to check this one out because apparently it's a whole lot of fun. It's a ladder-style game. Uh, why is your mic that you use in videos so odd? <laughs> There's a very good reason <laughs> for that one. That's a funny question. Uh, my wife will tell you, Eric will tell you, Flanny will tell you, the kids in my class will tell you, my kids will tell you, anyone who knows will tell you, I am an incredibly forgetful human being. And if I had to hold on to a microphone <laughs> or hold on to a lapel mic, I would lose it. I lose everything. Yeah. And so I said that I wanted to get a mic that I could use myself, which, so when I went to Essen or went to Origins, I was able to hold the, the, the selfie stick and the mic in the other one, but also that I would not lose, and how it works is uh, I can wear it around my neck, so I never lose it. It looks like a really bizarre pair of headphones. If you see me at Gen Con, you'll probably see me wearing it, but it helps me from losing the mic, and also it has uh, good sound quality, and so I like it a lot. 
Next is Pococo from Brain Games. This is a really interesting trick-taking game where you are going to see... Keep going. You're, okay, you're going to see uh, the cards that everyone has. You're going to try and bid on how many tricks they're going to get. It's brain games, so I know I'm probably going to like it, hopefully. So you check this one out. Uh, if you could design a game, what would it be? Uh, I did design a game. It was an adult party game called Help Wanted. It's probably one of the raunchiest games in front of it. And it sold out. And one day we're hoping to ship it to some, uh, shop it to somebody else. But if I actually designed my own game, I would, and actually, this was one of my other surprises of the show, I actually talked a little bit about Walter from Greenbrier Games, he's designing a game right now that's coming to Kickstarter in February, which is kind of like a, uh, a game where it has an app implementation, you go to a tile and something happens, then maybe if you come back later, the app will remember what happened to you. I want like an open world style game where you can do whatever you want, and you actually interacting with the environment changes how the game works. I, I'm hoping to get a copy of Western Legends in the next month or two, because uh, that looks like it might scratch that itch. But I would love to have, like, a because Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition is my favorite game of all time. I love these massive style games. So a game like that, I, I would really love to design, but honestly, I don't have the time, and I don't know if I have the talent either. I mean, because not everybody can do it. I mean, everybody thinks that they, they could probably do it, but it's, it's a lot of hard work, and playtesting sucks, let me tell you that. High school too, yeah, it's awesome. I, I just want to get this out of the way. Uh, it's going to be a very close race, I think, for my family game of the year. It's probably, and that being said, I've played a lot of games, and some of these might blow it away. This is probably going to be my game of the year, game of the year, but it might be my little site. I'm probably going to go back and forth a lot, but this is fantastic. And the big addition of this, it now goes uh, up to, I believe, 12 players, or 8 players. Goes now goes up to 8 players, but the cool new addition is there's this race mode where you and a teammate potentially have to get fishes and then get back to uh, a certain spot. And it's really sick and cool. If you have ice cool, get ice cool too. It adds more players uh, and, and it is great. Plus it now has like a sliding mechanism where one of the rooms can slide. Oh, so good. I, I can't wait to see what else comes from ice cool. Estimated amount of alcohol that was consumed by Team Bauer this weekend. Uh, I did not consume nearly as much as Nick and Eric because, I mean, if you know my channel, I'm very laid back, and as long as they're doing what, what we need to get done, I don't care how much they put into their bodies. Uh, I ended up buying a handle of whiskey, a handle of vodka, and then a bottle of gin, and I'd say there's probably, you mix it all together, there's probably about a third of that left. So however much that is, plus we drank a whole bunch of beer. Eric brought up beer and we drank a whole bunch of, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, it was a yeah. lot. <laughs> but it was three people and one of them is like a 400 pound dude. If you've never, if you've never seen my buddy uh, Nick, he's, he's six Play, foot Play eight. He's very tall. Six foot eight, like 400, 500 pounds. He's a huge, huge dude. And he clears <laughs> the way. I love being behind him at Gen Con. <laughs> Scarabia, Scarabia, I don't actually know how to pronounce it, uh, I did an interview with it, and uh, Brandon was finally like, yeah, however you want to say it, it's fine with me, so it's like, okay, cool, uh, this is the new Brood of Cathala game, and it seems really interesting, it's it's a game where you don't have player interaction, it's like a uh, one to four player puzzle game, looks really cool, Blue Orange has a super high track record with me, and this is uh, one that I'm excited to get, and I actually heard there was some good buzz going on about this game as well. <laughs> What's up? Estimated amount of alcohol the missus drank after watching four kids by herself this weekend. Amazingly enough, zero. She didn't drink much. She's a super lightweight she does, though. Have, yes, I'm a cheap drunk. Yeah. Love I it. did not have enough energy to drink beer after watching four kids. Yeah. You're amazing. I try. Uh, <laughs> next, this is actually my number two most anticipated game of Gen Con, Master of the Galaxy. This is a 4X game in which you have tech trees and bag building and exploration and exploiting and I am just stoked about this game so I'm really hoping it's good. I have never It looks right up your alley. I've never actually played an Ares game I don't think oddly enough despite the fact they have a whole bunch of games I've never really had much of a relationship with them so I was super excited when they when they were like yeah do you want to copy this since you're so excited about it so I'm really hoping this is good because uh it's not I'm going to be super disappointed when I'm super disappointed it tends to make the reviews seem more negative overwatch miniatures game would be amazing oh my god I feel like he knows our son <laughs> I feel like he knows me <laughs> Yes, yes Sean would. would never let you have that game. He would be playing with the miniatures. Well, we'd have to get two. It'd be the first miniatures game we'd really get into. And yes, that was one of my big disappointments of Gen Con. 
I super expected Blizzard to make an announcement. This was the first time they've been in there in 10 years, I heard. So I figured it was going to be Hearthstone, the card game. And that was what I was betting on, Hearthstone, the card game. Because, you know, it's a license for money. And as far as I know, they didn't do anything. They were just there. They had a whole bunch of setups of Sean Hearthstone. Gets a shirt. Yeah, Sean got a Reaper shirt. Not actually from them, though, because uh, they didn't have that much. Next, we have Dino Party from Ancona Games. And this is super cool. Uh, this this is why I love this hobby. I actually met Jeffrey at Essen, and then he messaged me because he saw me shooting an interview with somebody else. He's like, hey, you want to come over to the booth to check something out? And I, we ended up really hitting it off, so he might be uh, you know, helping us with our Kickstarter next year, and he's going to be uh, hopefully sending us some more games, including the new Antoine Bowser game, which looks really stupid cool. Uh, but this is Dino Party. This is a game where you're going to take dinosaurs, and you're going to throw them. And it looks oh, like a... What? Yeah, this one's going to the pile over there. Looks super cool. It uh, also comes in a lot of different languages, Vector. Yeah, like I said, Essen. And that's another thing. Man, I saw so many people from Essen, and they're like... Running out of room over here. And they're like, are you coming back to Essen? I'm like, no, I'm not coming back to Essen. Hopefully next year, though. But uh, that was so really cool. Next, speaking of uh, people in Essen, Essen, Vikings Gone Wild, Master of Elements. I love Vikings Gone Wild. I'm super excited for this expansion. Plus, hey, there's even a promo card with me in there! Uh, so I'm super excited about this one. And Lucky Duck Games, that <laughs> was another game. Up. That's another game I'm super excited about they have coming out called Mutants, which is a really interesting looking deck building game that has this cool element where you actually get to draft the cards that go into your biro at the beginning of the game. So imagine playing a, a game of like Dominion or something and where instead of 10 piles, you have 30 piles and then you draft your 10 piles. Uh, but then it has some other quirks and things. But I just thought that was a super cool concept of being able to draft the cards that you can buy. It sounded really neat. So, and plus, Lucky Duck Games they put out some awesome deck builders, aka uh, Vikings Gone Wild. I didn't check that one out. So, since he's going super fast, um, at least I feel like he is. Sorry, I'm I, going. I'm backtracking here a little bit. And I do bit want to apologize for going fast. By the how much alcohol Miss is consumed. Um, sounds amazing. Mansions of Madness Two, like the app, remember stuff for you. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, are you talking about Fire and Light? I think it is, yeah. Fire and Light. It doesn't have a kick, it doesn't have a Board Game Geek page yet, but from Greenbrier Games, that is one I'm super excited about. Keep your eyes on that one. And Walter uh, actually made Champions of Horror, which was another incredibly ambitious game that he was actually developing, designing on his own. So I mentioned with Greenbrier Games and their knowledge of miniatures and games and all that sort of stuff, this one could potentially be just absolutely fantastic. Well, it could be a giant train wreck, but I'm hoping not, because... I like Greenback Games. They've been supporters of Virus Game Point for a long time. Blank Slight, new one from USA Apple. Uh, this one, they actually had a whole bunch of, it's going to Target. They had a whole bunch of, uh, like, giant banners for it. It's a party game where you try to think alike. It seems like a typical party game, but you know what? I like typical party games. So, hey, play this one over there. Check it out. Also looks right up your alley. Yes. Trade on the Tinker. Tasty Minstrel Games. It's Tasty Minstrel Games, so it's going to be spectacular. Uh, actually, no, this one <laughs> looks really stinking awesome. I got a chance to sit down with Ryan, one of the designers of this game. And this is a negotiation game. Uh, Tasty Minstrel Game, 69 minutes, so it's like a Euro, medium weight Euro. But the thing that got me was six players. Because you get six players so often on game night. And then it's like, what are we going to do? It's like, we're going to play this, we're going to play that. I'm really hoping this is another option uh, because I love Euro games that play up to six players. And he said it actually is best at six players because you get tons of negotiation going on. Really excited for trade on the tickers. Gotta watch him with negotiation games. Uh, I do tend to not want to be the one who backs gets backstabbed. Nobody, <laughs> by the way, trusts him. Somebody's going to get backstabbed, and I prefer the one to me. Everybody's <laughs> going to assume that it's you trying to do it, though. Yes, but if everybody assumes that I'm going to do it, then clearly I'm not going to do it because I have that reputation of doing it. <laughs> uh, next, Rick and Morty, that's, The Ricks Must Be Crazy, head. multiverse game. Uh, I don't know anything at all about this game. I went over to Cryptozoic, and I was going to interview them, but they were super busy, and I didn't get a chance to go back to interview them. But they're like, hey, you interviewed, uh, you reviewed the other two. Uh, Rick and Morty games. Uh, and I was like, yeah, Mr. Meeseeks, Box of Fun, and Anatomy Park, which I didn't like Anatomy Park, but I really like Mr. Meeseeks. And so I was like, hey, here's another Rick and Morty game. Uh, come back later. I was like, cool. And they were still busy. So still, got a Rick and Morty. I don't know. Love the show, though. Want to watch some more of it. You're cute. Oh, thank you. She, she ups the cute value. I up the sweaty, dirty value. Because do I smell right now? No. Oh, surprising. Uh, because, wow, it was a very sweaty weekend. 
Mesozoic. This one from Z-Man Games. This one actually looks really stinking cool. It looks like one of those little slide puzzles. You remember those little puzzles you had that, like, this small, and you had to slide the pictures around. The little, so there's, like, one empty slot. You have to, do, 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 uh, to make stuff. That's pretty much this game. Uh, it is, I think it's, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. Ages 8 plus, 2 to 6 players. Looks really cool. That would go in that pile, but that pile's already getting kind of heavy, so we'll put it somewhere over here. I'm excited for that one. Next we have Ninjutsu. This one is from uh, Jellybean Games, who also supported the Kickstarter. Huge thanks to them. This is the next in the Scuttle line, aka the Treasure Hunters line. I like Scuttle. It's a really uh, simple family weight game, and this one is the same type of game, but about ninjas. It's for ages, I think, 8 plus. I think you probably play it with a 6-year-old. But he's got a whole bunch of games coming out of this line, so there's going to be a ninja one, a pirate one, a zombie one, and he's a super nice dude. So excited to get this one to the table. Did you hang out with the Dice Ooh. Tower group, Vinny? I didn't get a chance to really hang out with Tom Samersey, which I know is everything. Like, that's the big ones. But I did. I talked to Tom a little bit. Uh, I hung out with Sam for probably like five minutes. And we chit chatted. Uh, I got to play Fireball Island with. Uh, but, but, oh my gosh, I'm totally drawing a blank. I feel so bad. Uh, uh, Jason Levine. I, got, I played Fireball Island with Jason Levine. He actually taught it to me, which, by the way, it was spectacular. I got the vibe that he didn't really like me. Maybe it was just because he was tired or something like that. Uh, but I. I <laughs> I don't know why he wouldn't like me, so... <laughs> well, I'm honest. You guys know I'm honest. I mean, I, I got that vibe from him. We played Fireball Island. I enjoyed it. Um, I have, it there's no beef. I'm just, that you would say that. I'm just saying there's no beef or anything. I, maybe he was just tired. It was late. We were in the hot games room. Which, by the way, the hot games room. Yes, that is the place to be. That's one of my top five surprises. If you go to Gen Con, try and get tickets to the BGG hot games room. Uh, so the game library room is where you want to go if you want to play older games. But if you want to play new games, the hot games room is spectacular. You walk into it, it's this huge <laughs> ball. I'm, I'm, I'm beaming because I'm, you are. it's like I discovered a whole... right now. Okay, so here's what I do at Gen Con. We shoot until 6, interview, 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 interview. Just all day. We get in there at 10. Yeah. Actually, we get in there earlier than 10 now that TMG has hooked us up with the exhibitor passes. And then we interview all day. We take a lunch break. Maybe we'll take a 10, 15 minute break here and there. But we interview all day. And then go back to the hotel, I post the SD card into the computer, and I upload stuff, and I sit there and I wait for it to upload. But while it's doing that, I go out and I try to find hot new games so I can play them and shoot in fresh visions. That's what I've done every year at Gen Con that we've done the Gen Con Bonanza. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. I work like 16, 17 hour days most of the time. But the BGG Hot Games room is at the Hyatt, and it is a room that is filled with nothing but new Gen Con releases. And there's like... 10 tables and it's just like you walk in it's like <gasps> like if you've ever seen the bgg gen con preview it's kind of like that but in a room it's incredible uh that nobody teaches the games but you just sit down with the games all the hot new games it is the place to check out super awesome place check it out uh there's another copy of keyforge so that's not limited speaking of matt fantastic that's not laminated. It's a new game from Tuesday Night Games. Uh, this is actually a really incredible game. You got a chance to play this at uh, Origins. Origins. Yeah. yeah. Our son loved fun. it. That's going to this pile. It's a really simple game of Fresh Your Luck, and it's really, really stinking good. Um, so that one goes over there. Very cool game. It's actually a redoing of another game. But yeah, I like that one an awful lot. Any good meals while you were there? Hot Any... Wings. The Hot Wings, uh, they started off good. <laughs> <laughs> good meals while we were there. You know, I'll be brutally honest with you. Lunchtime, I always feel bad because it's like, I want to do food truck or the mall food court, and then I want to get back into interviewing, which, you know. You're you. I want, I'm here. I, you're, you're all go all the time. All you amazing people send me to Gen Con to interview, so I don't want to be eating. And honestly, I would skip lunch. I used to just do snacks. Uh, but, but Eric's like, no, 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 I eat lunch every day. And I was like, that's reasonable. I... I no, that is not how that went down. What? I had to convince you to give them lunch. No, 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 no. Eric, Eric brought it up, and I was like, okay, yeah, end of discussion. So, yeah, we ate food truck, and we ate food court pretty much every day for lunch. Uh, for dinner, did we do anything special? I don't really think so. No. I didn't eat anything particularly amazing at Gen Con. But I was working, like, 16-hour days, like, oh, every day. Nice. The hot wings were, they were completely dry. It's just the sauce. Uh, so another interesting story for you. Viceroy, Times of Darkness. Super excited. This is the upcoming expansion to Viceroy, which is a fantastic game from Mayday Games. Uh, but this is the only copy in the world of this expansion. And uh, this is one of those behind the, the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, they actually gave this to the Bearded Meeple to do a Kickstarter video for it. Uh, Tyler, super nice guy. Really like him a lot. 
But the problem is, right after Origins, he announced that he was done doing anything with videos. So he had the only copy in the world of this game, which needless to say, man, it was like, ooh, we're going to need that one back. So, um, so yeah, they asked me if they could do a rush video for that one. And so you will see my video of Viceroy, either a review or a preview of that in the next few weeks because the Kickstarter launches at the end of the month. And remember, I always like to tell every single person on this channel, if it's a review, that means it's legitimate Kickstarter. I like it. I support it. If it's a preview, that means that I would probably not back it. So remember, keep that in your head. Preview. Preview means that I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Review means that, yeah, go check it out. Don't tell any of the publishers I said that. <laughs> uh, continuing on. Oh, this one I'm excited about. Feel this, pick this box up. It looks heavy. Pick it up. No. 7.9 pounds. This is The Rise of Queensdale. This is a legacy game from Aaliyah that I love my wife and hopefully she will play with me. It's a 5 out of 10 on the brain scale. Uh, so it's not a brain burger, but this looks really stinking cool. And I like Charterstone, but I felt like Charterstone might have had a little bit of a, a runaway leader type of issue. You actually thought you, that it had that issue. Yeah, I did. Until she beat me in the end. Um... But yeah, this looks really stinking cool. Very excited about this one. It comes with a royal toilet plunger that you use to take pieces off. I'm excited to get this one to the table. It is massive. 7.9 pounds. Like I could just, bam. Uh, excited to get this one to the table. And I completely caught me off guard. I had no idea this was even out. And I think we're down to like only 20 more games. We're getting there. Yeah. Pounding through it. What time is it? Oh, it's not on. Continuing uh, on. 11.26. Yes. Okay. Also, uh, don't you think the Hot Games Room steals thunder from the original board game library? A uh, staple of Gen Con. I do not care. No, um, <laughs> I don't know. I've never actually been in the Board Game Geek library. I know I know, Matt. He, he doesn't have time to get to the library. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I have no interest in playing the old games. And that sounds like an elitist, no. but I'm here to cover new stuff. So I want to cover new stuff and give you my honest impressions on the new stuff. And I don't know if they actually have the new stuff in the board game in the library. Now, the only reason I went to the BGG Hot Games room is because uh, Aldi and Lance and the people that I do the Weekly Alley Boom podcast were like, that's probably the place where we're going to hang out at night. And, you know, I'm doing my friends, so I want to go hang out with them there. Um, and when I got there, I was just like, oh, this blew my mind. But, uh, no, I, I think you have room for both of them. Because, I mean, there's 60, 70,000 people. And... A lot of people. Yeah. So I think you definitely have room for both of them. Now, if, for, say, for instance, the library is like, hey, we have less people, something like that, then yeah, I think that might be a valid point. But in, unless we have those numbers, I don't know. But uh, that's interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. Who knows? Uh, I do know that, that I have a feeling the BGG Hot Games Room is definitely going to be even more popping next year because I know there was a lot of buzz about that one. Uh, nice answer. So, Bauer. <laughs> also, uh, ooh, Queensdale. Now I'm jealous. Queensdale. Oh, yeah. Rise of Queensdale. Yes. Super. Yeah, that one completely caught me off guard. I was at Ravensburger. I was like, oh, what's this dry arrow? I was like, ooh, legacy. It has a really cool mechanism in it where, um, the, how the catch-up mechanism is. Uh, so if, if you score, say, 13 points and somebody else scores 8 points and you're trying, the first person to get to 10 points might win the game, the next game, the person that scored 13 has to get to 13 in order to win the game instead of 10. It's a really cool concept. Hopefully it works. That's interesting. Next we have Jungle La, the next one from Hisashi Hayashi, who created uh, Yokohama, which you played and you liked. I don't remember it. Nope. Yeah, it was it was very elaborate, but it's a TMG game. I'm gonna um, believe you, but I liked it though. Looks like a really simple light dice rolling game. Probably got some meat on the bones. Thirty to forty-five minutes, two to five players. Decided to get this one to the table. Plus TMG, so I've liked nearly everything they that they put out. Any improvements you'd like to see at next year's Gen Con? Improvements? Yes, improvements. Fix the damn elevators. <laughs> no, escalators, <laughs> not elevators. Seriously, I, I I walked, and I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining for me, because I am a very able-bodied person. I do a lot of walking. I walk 14, 15,000 steps a day. I try to every single day. But seriously, there was probably seven or eight times where I had to walk physically walk up or down and... Escalator and Gen Con, and I'm not saying this to be mean, is a place that is full of people who are not the best at walking. So you should be on that. These people are paying a lot of money to be here. They're staying in expensive hotels. They're flying from all around the world. The least you could do is make it so these escalators work. Just have a guy whose only job is 
to walk around and check all the escalators. Like, that's eight-hour shift of just escalator, escalator, escalator. Because I know it's just some D-bags who are going around pressing the E-stop button. Which, by the way, if that's you, it is kind of funny. But just stop it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you it's not funny. But come on. Come on. It's not cool. Um, but other than that, you know, improvements. I don't know. I, I feel like they really handled things well. The will call was actually uh, uh, moving at a pretty decent pace. I actually had to wait in the will call line, which kind of sucked because gate 10 parking. Here's a little fun fact. You get the gate 10 parking, which is fantastic. Buy it through gate 10 and not through Gen Con. <clears throat> now, why? Because if you get a Gen Con ticket to gate 10, then you have to wait in the will call line to get your ticket. And then you have to go back to gate 10 and give them the Gen Con ticket. Whereas if you buy it directly through gate 10, you can just print it off and show it to them, and then you don't have to go back. So it's just going to save you a trip. A little fun back there for you. Uh, but no, I feel like Gen Con really nailed it out of the park. Like I said, this was our best Gen Con ever. Me and Eric both agreed on it. Uh, excellent, excellent Gen Con. And I think uh, Indianapolis is nailing it. They're nailing it. Way of the Panda, Simon. Uh, this one is actually a really cool-looking, uh, somewhat uh, medium-weight Euro uh, about pandas. I don't know. Uh, I interviewed uh, Sean from CMON. Sean, oh, you asked about my favorite interviews. I love interviewing Sean from CMON. He is a fantastic interview. He's very good at what he does. He has a great sense of humor. He's a super nice guy. So there you go. My favorite interviews at, at Gen Con. I always look forward to Sean. Uh, I really like his interviews. <laughs> Actually, uh, I did an interview with him about uh, the Resistance, the new version of the Resistance, which looks really cool. And it was in a display case. And right next to that in the display case, was Wacky Racers, because Simon's putting out Wacky Racers. And I was like, so is this, is this Wacky Racers? Is that an expansion to the Grizzled? And then he went into, like, sales pitch mode, talking about how that um, Wacky Racers was actually coming out. And then he, it, like, clicked that I was actually joking. And then he was like, oh. And then he was just, like, quick as a whip. And he's like, yeah, so the Wacky Racers are actually going to be fighting the Resistance, because that's going to be the 20-year uh, anniversary of the Wacky Ra Yeah, he's a, he's a super fun guy. Uh, Way of the Panda, Simon. I don't know much about it, but hey. Super excited about this one. Super, my son is super excited about this one. This one's from Dugade, aka Sit Down Games. This is Magic Maze Kids. It is a ages five plus version of Magic Maze because here's a sad story for you. I brought Magic Maze into my classroom and the kids went nuts for it. They played it 19 times in a day. Just bonkers for Magic Maze. But Sean was really bad and he got frustrated and he was sad. So now there's Magic Maze Kids, and this is definitely going to the pile. Super excited for that one. I hope it's really good. Next, we're talking about a trading card game. Not something that I typically talk about, but we got a chance to try out Warhammer uh, 40K Age of Sigmar trading card game. And this is, I think this is one of my top 10 games of Gen Con. I actually got a chance to play a game me and Flanny did. It's a really good trading card game. Uh, very easy to construct your deck. You put in 30 cards. And then you pick out four champions and four blessings. These blessings are going to be super powerful cards that you will be able to unleash if you can rotate your champion four times. And you're going to rotate your champion four times by playing specific cards and specific actions on your champion. If you like TCGs or you like Warhammer, check this one out. I am really digging this one. And while I don't have time to get into trading cards that in-depth, oh, it's hot down here, uh, this one's really good. I was very pleasantly surprised with Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Woo. Uh, did you see anything from the Dragonfire slash Catalyst Games? Catalyst Games. Uh, I saw they have a energy drink called Dragon Piss. Are you serious? Yeah. They had they had two energy drinks. Uh, that was actually a booth that I did not really get into too much, aside from checking out the energy drink. Uh, I, I know they have the uh, Dragonfire, which I, I, wanted, I interviewed them about at Origins last year, but I didn't know if they had anything new. And that was just one of the booths that we just didn't get into because they had a, a line most of the time. And there's, you know, there's 30 rows and we don't get to interview everybody. So unfortunately, I did not get that. But I will say, uh, we actually got a lot more involved on Twitter this year. It was me and uh, Flanny that were on the Twitter. So, and we had people that were making requests on stuff to check out and stuff they were interested in. And I That's think... pretty cool. Yeah, I think that might be something we look into doing a little bit more with next year. Because I feel like... You know, I'm not a big Twitter guy, but it was it was kind of cool. People from all That's across. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think there was a guy from Europe, and he's like, hey, would you be willing to check this one out? And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, if there's interest in it. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. So, no, we didn't check it out. Uh, next one is Top Spin from Helvetic. This one is really dumb looking, but I was excited about it. You spin a top in a box, and you're trying to knock little marbles into s little circles. It's 15 minutes, and it looks really fun. <laughs> so, yeah, that one's going to the pile up there. 
Uh, this was a Kickstarter that is a Thief's Hand, a card game. I don't know anything about it. This was one of the Kickstarters that I didn't realize was going to be a Kickstarter video, but it's a Kickstarter video, so Thief's Hand card game. Let me see. Also, uh, totally understandable, although a dragon kiss? I'll pass. That's what they named it. There was another one, I don't remember the name of it, but My needless God. to say, you name one dragon kiss, people are probably going to remember, forget the second the name of the other one. That's true. This one actually needs um, to go in a separate pile. Board game theme, that's not popular, you'd like to see more of. Mmm. Hmm. Board game theme. Mm -hmm. Oh man, do I really have to copy Tom Vassell? Which, by the way, Tom Vassell is just like, the nicest guy ever. Um, grocery store. I, I feel like that's a really great theme. I heard him say it once, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's a spectacular theme. Uh, I like management games. I really like the concept. Uh, oh, sports management or wrestling management. Like, if you're if you're a wrestler or if you're a wrestling fan, I would love the idea of like a backstage game where you have to, you know manage all these different personalities and trying to put on good matches while still at the same time you know getting faces and heels and all that sort of stuff or running a business and having like a really in-depth micromanagement game and i think there's a lot of these like three hour dry euros about sort of thing that i would actually love but i just don't have you know i should even say that i do have people who play it with me i just don't have the games but yeah i i really like management games where it's just managing things but it's like micromanaging them so not like corporate america uh, I love corporate Am America. Am I on the law, right line? Am I not understanding no. exact? I'm not understanding. No, That's corporate it. America is much more of a negotiation and backstabbing type well, of game. Well, I got that. I'm talking about a game where it's like you have, say, a restaurant, and you have to put your staff into the restaurant, and you have to have uh, maybe drink specials at the right time. You have to have prices that are right, and you have to pay for advertising. Like, I remember the Sim City Those game. Are that we games? Played. Like board games? There are. There's some very dry euros. Really? Yeah. Wow. Next one, High Society from Osprey Games, the, the classic Ryder Nitzia game. Got a new version. Excited to play it. Uh, there you go. It's, it's Ryder Nitzia. This one. This is another one from Sit Down. Like I said, Sit Down really caught me off guard. Penny Papers, Penny Papers, Penny Papers. Uh, these are three different versions of Penny Papers. They are roll and write game. But the thing that really intrigued me, and I, I interviewed him about all three of them, um, is that this one's ages 7 plus, this one's ages 8 plus, and this one's ages 9 plus, and it kind of it builds up. So this is the kind of thing where you get the age of 7 plus and you and your family really like it, you can then move on to the age of 8 plus and the age of 9 plus and it introduces like some new mechanisms some different things. I am super excited. I asked for a review copy. I was expecting getting one and he gave me all three. So uh, this one actually goes in the school pile because I have a feeling the girls in my class are going to love some rolling rights. Oh my gosh. I can see the end. I can see the end uh, of the games. I knew you liked micromanaging after the revelation of not allowing your team a lunch break. I didn't not allow them a lunch break. It was just... No, you just wanted them to eat snack food for lunch. It was pretty bad. <laughs> I've learned a lot since then. That's what I had to convince you of, that they couldn't eat snack food. I've learned you a lot. You wanted them to eat cookies. I've learned a lot since then about humans. Have uh, you played Kitchen Rush? Kitchen Rush, uh, the mobile app? I have not. Uh, Eric, Eric told me to go play it, um, but no, I have not tried it. Actually, no, 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 that's the, uh, oh yeah, I saw that at Essen. It actually looked really cool, but no, I have not played that one. I think that one's by, uh, oh my gosh, am I really going to blank again? Stephen Bonacore. How the hell am I forgetting the name of that company? I think might be on it. Though. Yeah, it's, it's scrolled up. I, I think that's from them, and like I said, I have absolutely, I've never had a relationship with that company. But yes, that, that one actually did really interest me when I saw it at Essen. Actually, we got a box that I... Sorry, hold on. Along the same theme. Grocery store. Ever played... Five-fingered severance from the creators of Fast. Mm, no. I will have to talk to Patrick about that. No. No. Uh, I did not know. I, I knew that. I've heard of that game. I think that was an older game, maybe from Minion Games, who sponsored everything. So be sure to show them some love. Uh, but no, I've never played that one. I might have to put that on my radar. Let me know whoever posted that, if, it, if it's good or not. Uh, next, we have a package that came in the mail. Is this the weird one with a whole bunch of random stuff in it? Yes. Fluff, which cunning critter are you from Bananagrams? And yeah, my wife was... It kills me that we get these packages every single year he goes to Gen Con. And I feel like they should be there. And I tell you this, not everybody gets to go to Gen Con. Like, I am super... You just said there are 30 rows. Bananagrams isn't... Even a little bit there. Yes. And actually, I have an amazing story to tell you. 
But I cannot... People know who Bananagrams is. God, I wish I could tell you all this amazing target. story, but I can't. I have an amazing story to tell you about uh, Massimo. Uh, so, anywho, uh, my wife was... I was. We were talking on the phone, and she was like, you got a package? She's like, oh, open it. Let me know what's in it. And she's like, oh, there's fuzzy dice and sunglasses and a chain. And I was like, wait, what? what and what? a cigar. <laughs> yeah. And, and a, a bush cigar. cigar. And I was like, wait, what? And so I just had her send me a picture. Fluff. Cutting critters make tricky bitters. Whoa, don't say that five times fast. You're going to be a racist. Um... <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I like most of the things from Bananagrams, so I'm excited to try this one out. Let's see. Roll into seal, kind of get a bit. How much? Age is 8 plus. Uh, if I didn't have so much stuff, this would go in the classroom. And I wonder, is this a real cigar? This looks like a. Is this chocolate? I or think is it's this a cigar? chocolate. Let's try it. I haven't opened it. Do I, do I dare? No, I think it's chocolate. Okay. Paper on it, but it's chocolate. <laughs> you couldn't see the paper? I. Moving on. Okay. A chocolate um, cigar. That's that's cool. And a chain. So yeah, let's, let's see a review of this. Is it Artipia Games? Is it Kitchen Rush? Uh, it's a co-op with hourglass timers about managing a kitchen. Yes, I saw that in Essen. Uh, it looked really cool, but I don't know anything else about it. But yeah, that one actually looked really neat. Uh, bag. So yeah, there's a new sponsor. So if you've watched any of my, my, my older videos, we talked about how Ordis Regni ruined the swag bags at Gen Con. And it ticked me and Eric off because Ordis Regni uh, was a sponsor for the swag bag because what they used to have at Gen Con was everybody got a bag. Like, you got your thing and then you got a bag. And Ordis Regni did it for two straight years, but their bags were stupid. Stupid, stupid, dumb, dumb. The worst marketing thing that you're ever going to see because they didn't put their names on the bag and it still frustrates me five years later. <laughs> you making a bag that everyone at Gen Con is going to carry around and you don't put your names on the bag. And I... You know, I don't have any behind-the-scenes scoops on this, but I would be willing to bet that they were like, man, those bags really suck. I would never buy those bags again. We didn't get any exposure. Well, that's because you put, you put stupid names on it. I was happy to see that this year, bags are back, baby. Bags are back. Uh, we got Pathfinder and Renegade Game Studios. Uh, so, yeah, they were bags. And I just want to show you the bag because I was very excited about it. Oh, my gosh. Surprise of Gen Con. I'm going to show you right now. Yes. Oh my. Stronghold bringing it out here in the U.S. Yeah, it was Stronghold. I thought it was. Uh, who's the dude? So we were actually super busy because it was Gen Con, and I was actually late to an interview because of this game right here called. I was very disappointed when he was talking to me about this that this was not the big about me. Uh, who's the dude? This is a four foot inflatable dude who looks like this guy with sunglasses on the front of this box. And you're playing charades with this. It is just charades, but instead of you doing the charades, you have to do it with the dude. So you have to make the dude mow the lawn, or make the dude give you the Heimlich maneuver, or make the dude do a variety of different things. We brought this to the Japan Made Games Party. Uh, we started playing just the three of us. By the end of the night, we had 12 people playing with us and other people going in and out. It's just a stupidly fun game. Uh, it needs better components. We actually ruined some cards because they didn't make them waterproof. We'll push a game like this. Come on, you got to make these waterproof. Uh, I actually was like, this is the kind of game that needs like uh, a little bit more of a, uh, uh, a, I think, a better set of components. Uh, but yeah, this, this game is so stupid You don't stupid like fun. an inflatable dude? No, 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 the cards. The cards need to be better. And they really, I wish they just had this deck and then a blank deck. Because what it ended up devolving into is just people just thinking of stuff to do, funny with the dude, and then we just guessed what it was. I, Who's the dude is hilarious. It's like 16 plus, but... Probably because it comes with a giant blow-up doll. Like, I don't even know if I can well, bring this I into mean, class. No, that's probably... Don't... don't yeah, don't. I don't want to have to explain to parents why their friends, why their kids are, like... Talking about an inflatable man. Riding the dude like a lawnmower or something. Um, yeah. But it's a lot of fun. We, we laugh so hard we cry many times. I also feel there's large alcohol... Uh, what do you mean? The dude, 16 plus, drinks a couple beers, you're good to go. It's a fun game. Wait. Play the game. Can easily turn it into, like, drinking and playing the game. Okay, okay. I thought you were talking about doing inappropriate things to the dude. No! I was going to say, that's 18 plus, not 16 plus. And, no! And you said 16 plus. you got to be 21 to drink. Remember? I know that. <laughs> So Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, dear. Uh, next it's year. almost midnight. Oh my gosh. Do you want to you want to call it for you? And I'll just keep going. What? No, I'm fine. I'm sorry. We only have about almost, 15 fine. games left. Um, 
I still gotta upload this video. It's crap. My Dragon brain Castle. Simon, this one came out of Edison. Sort of, I've heard amazing things about it. Uh, yeah, it looks cool. And I and, and yeah, Sean, I interviewed him, and he's like, dude, this one sold out. This one sold out. This one sold out. So he gave me some of the stuff from last year. But either way, excited to check it out. I've heard really awesome things about this one. There you go. Another one I was super surprised about from Walter at uh, Green Bar Games. This is called Barbarian, and this is a really cool looking dice placement game. Emphasis on bear. And yeah, it's super looking cute. The artwork looks really cute. And we did an interview, and I was like, wow, this looks like are a they really. Are bears? Yes. Really awesome game about uh, fighting your bears, and you have a bear tribe, and you have to collect resources, but at the same time, you have to allocate your dice to do attack and defense. So it's a dice allocation game. I am really excited to play this game. Is it me? Don't they look like the um, Star Wars guys? Uh, they do. They do. Uh, next, we have Shogun Showdown. I know nothing about this game at all. It was actually from the same guy who gave me the un the Mana Unlocked, who just reached out to me. He was like, hey, I'm a supporter of your channel. You want to go to this booth and pick up my game? I was like, yeah, absolutely. And I guess this is another one of those games. So, <laughs> I know nothing about it. It's a trick-taking dexter trick dexterity game. I love trick-taking. I love dexterity. This sounds You don't usually hear the two together, do you? No, you don't, so I'm excited. Okay. Ooh, uh, where's one? the Dice and Dragon game from? Dice and Dragon game. Um, Sorry, we're backtracking a little bit. I gotta, I gotta figure dragon. it out. <laughs> I don't know where it went. <laughs> Questions wah, don't go wah. I'm sorry. I have no idea where it went. Sorry. Uh, next. Wow. <laughs> this is super cool. I love when game companies do this. They butter you up by sending you super cool stuff. Look at this guy. Hey, this is for Root, which is from the creator of Best, Leader Games. I am insanely excited to get this one to the table. Uh, oh, oh, that one's from uh, Gold Knight Games. Yeah. Who apparently has a, an absolutely terrible record on Kickstarter, which they're trying to turn around and I think releasing great games and just being, you know, upfront and honest on Kickstarter will hopefully shift that. But, you know, I'm here to review games. I'm not here to bash on companies for bad business practices. But I do that sometimes, too. Because, hey. You want honesty. You do. Uh, Root. I'm excited about this, and actually I heard a lot of hot buzz about this game. Even though I did hear some people say it was not the best two-player game. But yeah, I am super stoked to play this. Look at that. And he's cute. Yeah, that's super awesome. Uh, but yeah, Bass was my game of the year a couple years ago. They're fighting over that. All right, we're down to like the top ten. Okay. Bottom ten, I should um, say. Or the I last ten. I have a feeling this isn't the first time you've brought home an inflatable man. <laughs> it is, in fact... It is. Uh, Thanks. Enjoy that comment. That is funny. <laughs> uh, Smith's Winterforge. This one is from Passport Game Studio. This looks like a really generically themed game about uh, molding things in a forge, but it actually sounded really cool. And, Forge uh, your destiny. And I like most of the games that I played from Passport Game Studio, so I'm excited to play this one. And I was watching some people play it, and I asked one of the guys after doing the interview, he's like, what do you think? He's like, oh, this is, this is really good. So I'm excited to get this one to the table. Plus, it comes with it four expansions in the box. They're not messing around here, making you buy the expansions from the side. Extra modules in the box, which I love when game companies do that. And that's another thing that I noticed uh, about a lot of companies. They're dialing back the numbers of games they're making, and they're trying to make better games and be more picky with which games they bring out, which I think is excellent because, and I, and I will honestly say that, I, I pushed out a lot of reviews before Gen Con because, you know, I was like, uh, I was like, oh, I can get this out for Gen Con, I can get this out for Gen Con, hey, yeah, I can get this out for Gen Con. So I was able to push them all out, and a lot of them were really good to great, and I think the hobby, man, just, it's a great time to be in the hobby. Next, Exodus Paris Novu. This is a new social deduction game in the dystopian universe, aka Coop and Resistance, four to six players, 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, I, I did an interview with them. Uh, I didn't hear any buzz, good or bad about it, but uh, needless to say, I love Coop. I love the Resistance. This one's getting played this week, and hopefully it's great, because I would absolutely love to put it up there with Coop and Resistance, which are both still in my collections after 15, 20, 30, 40, probably 100 plays of Coop, honestly. Maki Stack, yes. In your opinion, what is the IT game at Gen Con this year? I didn't get a chance to see the Geek Hotness Buzz, which would probably give you a better feel for it, but I uh, uh, I know Everdell from Starling Games, a.k.a. Game Salute. They, they're, they're breaking off into a whole bunch of different branches, so you'll forget the fact that they're Game Salute and they screwed over a bunch of people on Kickstarter. Uh, which, by the way, that you know that's another valid strategy. You got a terrible reputation, which apparently Game Salute did, uh, break up into three or four different companies, and so no one will forget your game salute. Remember your game salute, which I'm interested to see if that works. Uh, so Everdell, I think, was one that a lot of people were excited about. Simon had, uh, Simon had that one. I don't know. I feel like it's really hard to have a game of the show now, just because of how much stuff is at the show. It's ridiculous. I think the last time 
I really was like, that was the game of the show was when Code Names came out. But right now, I don't, I don't really know if there was a game that I'd say that was one of the games of the shows because there was so much stuff at the show. So you know what? I think Gizmos. I think that I saw a lot of people playing Gizmos in the hallway. So I, you know, I might go Gizmos, but honestly, there was nothing that was like that was it. Like the year King of New York came out, I know that was huge. Code Names was huge. But I don't know if there was really one that was like, just bam, blew up there. Next we have Maki Stack. This one's from Blue Orange Games. This is a chopstick dexterity game, which, hey, what, what more do you need to know? So, it looks like fun. Yeah, it does look like fun. And it's Blue, Orange, it's Blue Orange. So it probably is fun. Woo! Get into the end. Get into the end. Package, package. What's in the package? What's in the box? Oh, that's that one. It looks like a takeout box. It's like a takeout box. Oh, that too. <laughs> it looks like a takeout and box. And it's a menu. It's a menu. Don't lose your noodles. The design is very clever. The noodle game from the fantastic... Fa oh, Bananagrams. Uh, 29 noodles, 4 children's chopsticks. Again, that came in a separate package, by the way, than the other one. Become a noodle ninja. And that's kids in the back doing... I, I have no idea. 2 to 4, 6 plus, 20 players. Uh, the packaging is super cute. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see if we that one probably soon, especially if Sean can play. <laughs> oh, Fortune Cookies! Oh, I didn't oh, see love when game companies do cool stuff like that. Just gets me excited. Okay. Uh, game of the show, Blow Up Dude. Dude, I am serious. <laughs> um, spoiler alert, Eric is going to put that as his number one game of the show, and super surprising spoiler alert, I, I don't know if I disagree with him. Like, we had so much fun with that game. And it's, I, I just, I have a hard time putting this my number one game of the show because it's just charades with a blow-up doll. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, it sounds like it was a game that was made at a bachelorette party, but we had so much fun. <laughs> we had half the bar watching us play, and it was just pure, unadulterated, giddy laughter and glee. And I mean, that's, that's why we play games, to have fun. And, and so, yeah. It sounds I, like a game that needs to go to Wisconsin and get you. Yeah, that's, this is no joke. Uh, <laughs> Fallen, uh, Fallen Land, a post apocalyptic board game, The Outriders Trading Post. This is an expansion to Fallen Land, which I talked a little about earlier. Excited to get this one. More cards, more cards, more cards. And they have a new artist who is really stinking good. So I'm excited about that. And they got some upcoming stuff, uh, which I can't talk about. So, shutting my mouth. Continuing on, we have this game, Shifting Realms. This is a really interesting looking game. It's from the same guy who designed Hero. Escape, not Hero Quest or Hero uh, Hero uh, Hero Clicks. Hero Escape. Uh, he has his own company. He made with his brother, Craig Van Ness and Jeff Van Ness. And this one actually looked really interesting. Heavy box too. Uh, I decided to get this one to the table and try it out. <laughs> they are on it with this blow up guy. Okay, slap a Bowers game corner on blow up dude and bring him to Gen Con with you next year. Uh, I honestly think I would give that a Bowers best seal if the components were better. Like, that's going to get, like... I don't think that's what he's talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> Four fortune Uh Yeah, I, I could not believe how much fun that game was. Caro from Hurricane. Uh, I have no idea. This was when we were at the Asmodee, and she's like, uh, I was just like, whatever you want me to cover, whatever you want some eyeballs on. And so she handed me this. It's a Mad Max-style game. I know nothing about it. It's from Caro Hurricane, which is underneath Asmodee. So, no idea. Hopefully it's good. I do like the Mad Max theme. Downforce expansion! And I will say Downforce. Uh, most, a lot of people... Consider this to be the best game out of the Restoration Game line. I actually thought it was third place after Stop Thief and uh, The Indulgence. I still liked it, though. It's still in my collection. I'm looking at it right now, so I'm excited to see the new maps and what it adds. So we're super excited about that. Uh, so, Carol looks interesting, and game of the show, Root. Yeah, I... That, that one, I actually did hear a lot of people. That might actually have been... Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, yeah, I can't agree. And The Mind, I also saw tons and 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 tons of people playing The Mind. So it might also be The Mind, but Minds came out at Origins, and it was kind of the game show at Origins as well. So, you know, Panasaurus is on fire right now. Jungle Race. No, that's, you know what, that might be another huge announcement that I was excited about. Machi Koro Legacy. That sounds really cool to me. Uh, Jungle Race. This one is from Cradio Creations, who was shopping a bunch of stuff. They're trying to get American distributors. Uh, this looks like a really light 2-6 player 20-minute game. Put it in the school pile, please. Another Most game for them. Overhyped. Most overhyped. I don't know. Um, I didn't get a chance to play much because I was interviewing. So I, I can't really I can't really say. 
Let me think about it. Uh, Pink. This one's the same one for Creator Wave Creations. This is like a really enjoyable, uh, light, roll and write game. That one doesn't pop. The Captain is Dead Lockdown. So, I've never actually played The Captain is Dead, but I've heard it's outstanding. So, this is the second episode of The Captain is Dead. Super excited to check it out. Uh, cooperative game where you have to deal with the fact that your Captain is Dead. And we're down to the last three games. Oh my gosh, it's here. And now I have to go upload videos. Uh, this one is Tofu Kingdom from Blue Orange Games. Apparently, it is a werewolfy style game. Uh, I had no idea that it existed. Uh, I was interviewing Brandon about Blue Orange Games and Scarabia, and he's like, Can you check this one out? I was like, No. He's like, All right, here you go. And so I was like, Oh, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I love werewolf style games. I play, I actually have the uh, Aaron's House Team Retreat next week, and they love werewolves. So I'm going to go bring this yeah. and see how it is. It also has really cool packaging. Like it's tan okay. on the side with a zip on the there. Really cool looking. I want a werewolf that's like this, actually. Give me a werewolf that's like this. This would be excellent. Last two, Orleans Invasions. It's old as dirt, but man, I've wanted it for a long time. Orleans is in my top five games of all time. This makes it a cooperative game. Have you played Orleans with me, dear? I don't think so. Well, now I want you to because it's, it's cooperative. It's cooperative. Now. I um, like cooperative. Yeah, this is one of those ones where I, I was just talking. I was like, all right, we got Jungle Law, we got Sigris. I was like, is there any chance I could grab Orleans Invasions despite the fact it's an old game? He's like, yeah, grab it. I was like, yes! So yeah, super excited about this one because I've heard nothing but amazing things and I love Orleans. That being said, I didn't get a copy of the five player expansion because it was sold out before then. Which is a bummer because I love Orleans but I wanted five players. Last but not least, one of the games, like I said, probably the game of the show, one of the games of the show, even though I think Root, yeah, you're just the inside. Everdell, this is a really stinking cool looking game. Um, I wasn't that interested into it uh, because, you know, the wild animals thing, being out in the woods, it's not really a theme that I get into, but... Man, it's a tableau building game with, I think it's, it said, 130 distinct different cards, and you're building your tableau. I actually, during the interview, it was more like a two and a half minute interview, I got hyped about the game as I was watching other people play and seeing the components and seeing how the game worked. Looks really cool. Excited to get this one on the table. That is Everdell. And, whoo! There you go. There's no more games there left. There's no more games left. Um, are you doing a top 100 favorite board games this year? It is... In the plans, yes. I, I hopefully want to do it. My buddy Brandon would like to do it again with me. I really enjoy doing those lists. Um, they're a lot of fun. I normally take a day off work, drink a lot, hang out with my buddies, and do it. So, yeah, I might do it this year. I don't remember if I did it a year before or the year or two years ago. But, yeah, it might be time for me to do another one of those. No more questions? I don't think so. Awesome. There's nothing listed unless they come up with something. As always, if you're enjoying this, Click on the subscribe button down below. If you got any other questions, post them. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer those uh, a little bit later on. And once again, thank you, each and every one of you. Even if you didn't back the Kickstarter or whatever, you just being here, being a subscriber, supporting with views and likes and thumbs and all that sort of stuff, it just keeps me going. And because, you know, she'll tell you, I started off with like no subscribers, and then I was like 10 subscribers, one subscriber. And I love he was super hobby. I love where it's going. I love going to these events and playing these games and bringing these games into my classroom and teaching these girls that I play with and these boys that I play with and hopefully you know hopefully helping them become that and I don't, I'm waxing poetic but thank you as always and one more but no, they they yeah uh, what did you think of claustrophobia I lost it oh uh, I actually played I believe I played the original claustrophobia is one of the first games that I, I got to in the hobby and it's a, a redone version of that. Uh, I didn't get a chance to play it. It looked super sick and cool. He seemed enthusiastic about it, but you know, it's really hard to get a really good opinion about something in the interview. But I actually, right, uh, right as we started interviewing, uh, the guy was getting up and they were playing a two-player game. I think this is a two-player game. And he was like, oh my God, this is incredible. The other one said, this is freaking amazing. So two completely random dudes thought it was incredible and amazing. So there you go. Two dudes. They liked it. Uh, Plus the blow-up dude. I bet he likes Sorry. it Sorry. It's, Sorry, but he just keeps popping up. Oh. Blow up dudes in the top ten. <laughs> well, there you he go. Just keeps coming back. As always, thanks for your time, YouTube. <laughs> oh, now I'm going to go post the rest of those videos. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get it done. I want to get it done. Oh. The floor is a mess. Yeah, it's going to be a mess for a while. How do I turn this off?